Hey, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Bar Show back with episode 81 of Bar Tip Tuesday. This one is titled, Why Are My Bars Rusting? So like, why are they actually rusting? You hear that all the time. Um, you hear us talk about barbell maintenance and post about it on social media and on the website. So today we're gonna get into really what's, what's occurring or like why is this actually happening? So um, starting off, you know, what is rust? So like a simplified, very simplified equation would be, you know, oxygen. So the oxygen in the air plus moisture, whether it's coming from the humidity, whether it's coming from your hands with your sweat um, equals rust. So basically you need to try to keep your bars as dry as possible and you need to make sure they're taking the chalk, the skin, whatever's in the knurling itself, you need to be getting that out on a regular basis. Otherwise, um, your bars are going to rust. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So basically what we have to do um, is we need to disrupt, disrupt that equation. So we'll get into that in a second. But a typical scenario would be, you know, you're at your local box and you have, you know, 5, 10, 15 members in the class. Maybe they're doing, you know, power cleans and pull-ups in their workout, right? So obviously there's going to be chalk involved, right? So, um, you know, they get through the workout and then they take their bar back over to the nine bar holder and they, you know, put it in into the, into the holder vertically and they're <laughs> right there where they grab for the, the power cleans is going to be nice and chalky, right? So... I venture to guess that at least half of those people aren't going to take a brush and get the uh, chalk out of the knurling, or they're not going to use a spray or use our wipes to get or to uh, make or get the bar to be clean again. So they're not going to sanitize the bar or anything like that. They just put the bar back into the holder and then they head out the door. So most of us probably can relate to that. Um, you know, we're all guilty of it at some point, whether we're in a hurry or something like that. But we want to try to get in the habit of at least, at least getting the brush involved with getting the chalk out of the knurling. Why? Because the chalk is going to hold the moisture very, very easily. So that's why you've seen bars that are rusted in specific areas of the bar. So whether you're doing a snatch um, and somebody, you know, chalks the crap out of the end here, um, you, you can see, you know, a couple inches, whether it's three or four inches on the end here, you'll see that rusted or very popular is, is where you're going to grab for a clean or a deadlift. I mean, I've seen it time and time again. And then also in the middle here where there's no knurling, um, where the bar is going to sit for, you know, front spot or the receiving catch for a clean. So it's important to, to get that stuff out of the bar and to try to keep the bar as dry as possible. It's obviously gonna be, uh, there's a lot of variance depending on where you live. Um, so like us in Ohio, it's pretty humid in the summer. You know, someone in Las Vegas or Arizona, um, they're not gonna to have to worry about barbell maintenance as much. I mean, they still need to do it to avoid rust um, or at least prevent it. And, uh, but you know, just from experience from seeing up close, like in Miami, seeing bars in Texas, um, some of those more humid states, New Orleans, that's another one, the bars like seem to rust overnight, depending on what finish, how many people are using it, and are you even, you know, maintaining them at all. So there's, there's different factors that go into it, and if you're near the coast too, sorry guys for those people, but there's an added, you know, factor to consider, it's the salt in the air that's coming from the ocean, obviously. So the salt basically is going to accelerate the process even more. And you guys can vouch for me on that one, I'm sure. So take that into consideration too. Um, a quick note on the barbell finish. So just a very high level um, description on that, which more can be found on Rogue Fitness. They have a nice um, spectrum. So it shows you, you know, on the one, one side is gonna be bare steel, which basically offers zero protection against rust. So those ones are, you, you must, you must, uh, maintain your bar. If you don't, if you don't care about it rusting, that's fine. So a lot of people will get a bare steel bar, mostly because of the feel and they love the grip. Typically, it's going to be a little bit sharper. You'll see them a lot on like uh, on like powerlifting bars. So that's a personal preference. On the other end, you're going to get uh, you know at the very top is going to be like st stainless steel. So that one, um, 
is very good at protecting against rust, so you're not going to have to maintain that finish as much. Um, what we typically see a lot of the time is going to be like black oxide and black zinc. Um, there's some chrome in there, and then obviously Cerakote has is, is been pretty prevalent lately. Um, so kind of in that ascending order. So there's just a handful of factors. I mean, the easiest way, so you're not stressing out about it, is to keep an eye on your bars. If you start to see them, um, you know, getting chopped up over and over again, that's a telltale sign. I like to think of it as like a bar a day. So like, you know, apple day keeps the doctor away, a bar a day keeps the rust away. So um, grab a bar, you know, or just go over to your nine bar holder or gun rack, get the chalk out. Like, it's pretty simple or, you mean, it shouldn't be all on your shoulders either. You should be communicating this to your members or whoever is using your bar to actually um, maintain the bar because you don't want to be left with, um, if you actually care about the bars and you care about them rusting, you don't want to be left with an orange bar because a lot of times you'll see like that, like kind of like patina look. So you see like a orangish red, you see like little dots on the bar. That's pretty common too. Um, or you'll see it start to rust out in specific areas of the bar like I was talking about earlier. So um, how to, another, you know, the added layer on how to actually prevent this would be to use something like our formula here, our bar shield formula. So this is an eight ounce bottle. It'll service up at least 50 to 60 bars depending on their current condition. Um, all you have to do after you get this, the chalk and the gunk out of the knurling, it's just a, it's a nice flip top. So it's super easy to use. Thin line on top of the knurling here. You can even use them on the sleeves if you have um, some surface rust out there um, and thin line and then you work it in with the brush so you're conditioning the bar so basically you're making a barrier um, a barrier against rust from happening so you're you're taking out that um, you're protecting it from that being exposed to the elements okay so it's not a permanent thing it's not a one and done solution because you obviously keep using bars you keep using chalk you sweat on the bar that sort of thing but, you know, as a good rule of thumb, if you're in a more humid state or if it's the more humid months, um, then you need to, at the minimum, two to three times a month, at the, at the minimum, if not more. If you're, you know, by, by salt water, that's another, I would push up three to four probably. Um, I'm a barbell nut, so like I like, <laughs> I have a black oxide row of high bar, so I try to keep that and store it in a cool, dry place. Um, just because I treat barbells like they're my baby. <laughs> so um, that is going to be the disruptor, how you're going to help prevent or help at least mitigate rust from occurring on your bar. So if you stay up on a regular basis, it's going to basically increase the longevity of your bar, right? So if you actually take care of your bars, your bar should probably last a lifetime. Unless there's something structurally wrong inside the sleeve, for instance, whether it's a bushing or a snap ring or something that's bent, then, and you're actually taking care of your bar, you're not dropping an empty bar, you're not, you know, doing uneven loading, you're, you're uh, not loading the bar incorrectly, those sorts of things, your bar should literally last the entire lifetime, right? So I know that was a little lengthy, that was probably one of the more. Uh, longer episodes we've ever done, but please, if you do care about your bars rusting and you want them to last long, especially if you're a gym owner and you have a lot of bars to maintain, it's either you, um, and I know for sure that the members care about the presentation of the bars um, because I coach at a gym and I've heard it secondhand. So make sure that you take that into consideration. Otherwise you're gonna be spending, you know, on the very, uh, lower end for a, a cheaper quality bar on the $150 all the way up to, you know, for a multi-purpose bar, you're around, you know, 350 at the most probably um, for some of the higher end ones. And then obviously once you get into specialty bars, you know, your Olympic bars and stuff like that, those can go just up exponentially, you know, like goes over a grand, um, stuff like that. So take that into account. Okay. And uh, if you have any questions at all, please reach out. Definitely uh, take a look at the article that we wrote uh, on the website blog. 